This is Robert Fisher with the Virginia Institute for Effective Thinking. Today's Thursday, October 31st, and we're talking with a man who may be Virginia's next governor, Robert Sarvis. Robert is a 37-year-old Harvard-educated mathematician, attorney, and economist who's introduced many new ideas into the campaign for governor to make our government more efficient, more effective, and less expensive. Robert, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, Robert, one of the things that you said is that we need to make, uh, we need to strike a balance um, in government, in governmental power so that um, the government protects our rights, but also we limit governmental power so that um, um, our freedoms are also protected. Talk to us about what you mean by that. Well, any, any uh, government has, has the potential to be injurious of our rights. And so uh, we have to be very, very worried about granting to government coercive powers because it can be turned against us. Uh, you know, I think it was Madison who said that if men were angels, there'd be no need for government, and that if, uh, if men in government were angels, there would be no need for constraints. But but uh, government is 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 uh, you know if the people who are in government are human and they're fallible, they're subject to the same passions as uh, private citizens are. And so, you know, government power can be abused, and it can be turned against us, and, and so we have to make sure that uh, government is uh, powerful enough to protect our rights, but um, not, not too powerful that it uh, can, can restrict our freedoms uh, to, and, and, and sort of uh, um, trample on our rights. Now, another thing, um, you, you favor parents having the ability to to uh, direct um, education dollars instead of uh, bureaucrats and politicians. Uh, talk to us about how you think parents should be able to influence uh, the, the expenditure of, of education dollars. Well, right, it's so, so the, the, the education system is, is essentially run by politicians and bureaucrats for the benefit of politicians and bureaucrats. Uh, parents and teach, uh, excuse me, uh, parents and children uh, are are not well served by the public education system. It's sort of a one size fits all, uh, and it's very expensive. And some of the schools around the state are failing. So, so how do you how do you reform our education system? Well, we've been spending several decades trying to fiddle with the public schools, and and a lot of the ideas have been bad. Uh, a lot of the good ideas don't get implemented because the incentives to do so are not there. Uh, so, so a way to short circuit all of this is to put a portion of the money in the hands of the parents uh, of the children who are in the schools and, and allow them to take their kids out of failing schools to find uh, resources in the private marketplace, educational services. And that's not only going to give, give people a way out, but it's going to incentivize uh, a, a wider array of uh, service providers to come into the market. and. You know, in every other area of the economy, uh, an open and competitive marketplace leads to quality improvements at lower costs, and there's no reason to think that that's not going to happen with education. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Um, you also believe that we could reduce gun violence if we were to end the war on drugs. Um, talk to us about how ending the war on drugs might um, might reduce the amount of gun violence in America. Sure. Well, first let me say that uh, that a lot of people don't realize that there's been a two decade long decrease in gun violence and gun homicides. Uh, I think gun homicides are about half of what they were 20 years ago. So we have had success on that, even as uh, gun ownership has has increased and, and concealed carry has increased. Um, but a lot of a lot of the gun violence in our society comes from uh, gang wars and drug, drug violence, drug-related violence. And, and the sense of what we're doing with prohibition is, drug prohibition, is creating a very well-armed, very well-funded criminal enterprise that's very violent. And, you know, this is, this is the same thing that happened during alcohol prohibition. And after we ended alcohol prohibition, there was a decade-long decrease in violence. And there's no reason to believe that, that we wouldn't see the 
same thing after ending drug prohibition. I mean, the, 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 the percentage of, of gun crimes that are related to, to drugs uh, is, is very substantial. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's very substantial, and uh, it's easy to find if you Google it. But, uh, you know, there's, there's bringing, bringing, shifting our focus away from sort of the, the war mentality and the criminalization and prohibition would just have a lot of uh, beneficial effects on a lot of the social ills that are either created or uh, magnified by the drug war. So you favor the legalization of marijuana and the decriminalization of uh, a, a large number of other um, uh, controlled substances? I do. I think that uh, likely, like, I think we should, only, we should basically focus on marijuana at this point. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Virginia has an appetite for tackling the other, uh, for, for, for hard drugs, uh, which is fine. Uh, you know, I'm, I definitely want to make the, the, the step on marijuana because I think that the evidence is just very clear that this is a this is something that does not cause nearly the social ills that alcohol does that it's uh, not particularly harmful uh, it's a freedom issue but but again it also touches on so many other issues where we're pushing people into the criminal justice system taking away their voting rights making them unemployable because they have a criminal record all for mere possession of marijuana and so it, it it ruins a lot of lives and livelihoods, breaks up families, uh, just makes it hard to make a living. And, uh, you know, there are enormous enforcement and incarceration costs associated with it. A lot of resources, police resources, public defenders' offices and prosecutors, a lot of those resources could be better used on violent criminals, uh, policing and investigating violent crime and prosecuting them. Uh, so, you know, this, this is an issue that really matters and, uh, you know, Doing the right thing on marijuana is, is the best thing we can do in the next four years. Now, you're uh, you're a businessman, also. You started your own business. Right, I had a I had a mobile phone app business. Okay, well, um, Terry McAuliffe mentioned that uh, when um, he started his car company in Mississippi, he got eighteen million dollars worth of government funds to start his business. How many millions of dollars did you get to start your business? <laughs> I, I, we didn't get any. <laughs> we, uh, and, that, and that's a very clear distinction between uh, Terry McCullough's supposed entrepreneurship and, uh, and a lot of other folks out there. You know, there, there's, there's, you, can, you can make money by, uh, you know, seeking it through the private marketplace, selling something, engaging in voluntary transactions, benefiting consumers. Uh, that's one way to make money. Another money is to extract rents from uh, subsidies from from government, and that's essentially using the course of power of government to transfer wealth from taxpayers to you. And that's a totally inappropriate uh, way to make money. That's the problem that we have. That's cronyism. That's uh, uh, it, it just undermines the rule of law. It makes it harder for. Uh, businesses to compete on a level playing field when there are people who have political access who can make money that way. And not only that, it also draws a lot of smart people into lobbying and law and protected industries like, like law and, and, you know, in some cases the financial sector with its implicit subsidies. Uh, and it's a real, it's really problematic. I mean, we need our smart, our smartest people to go into, uh, you know, wealth creating, not wealth transferring industries. Robert, thank you so much for being uh, with us here today. And I, I think there's definitely some, some excellent ideas and certainly food for thought. Good luck on Tuesday. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.